This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.41 p.m. Fashion with late New York time. We should have started at 8.30. 11 minutes late. Um, this is a Clueless Day Trading weekend strategic webinar trying to set people up for what's going to happen next week. Very big week coming up. Fed meeting, uh, Brexit uh, elections, UK elections. Uh, and of course, the market's at new highs, almost at new highs, uh, and all kinds of good stuff. And a couple of great earnings coming up, uh, or a couple of great companies announcing earnings. Uh, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. Let us begin. Welcome to the world of trading. Markets ramped up, big time, big time. And uh, I'm not going to take full credit for it, but I'm going to take a good amount of credit for it. I told you guys it's going to happen. And this is what happened. Okay? And this is what's happening right now. Futures are down about six points. You can see that right here. We can draw a couple of lines, as we always do. And it's a little consolidation that's going on pre-market. This week is going to be an enormous week. I'm not going to say it's going to be an ultimately high week, but I think it is going to be. One way or another, you guys can get to know one thing. Christmas. Believe in Santa Claus. Christmas is 17 calendar days away. That's approximately, what, 15 business days away? or 13 business days away, whatever the case may be, and the market's going to be higher. Look, everything that I said about the markets came true. Now, from a trade management standpoint, certain stocks, a whole bunch of stocks went up, some went down. But the fact is that if you're playing the clean market, SPY, IWM, the Russell 2000 or the QQQ, you made out like bandits. I was talking to a new member uh, and returning member uh, who was away for a little while and just signed up for, on a, on a, for a six month subscription uh, this afternoon, late afternoon. Carl Smith. And he's a very successful guy. 31 years old, makes very decent money. And um, and I asked him a question. So what do you like about my service? He goes, I like the swing trades because it always seems to get where it wants to get to, even though all this stuff happens. So he doesn't always necessarily look at the market on an intraday basis, but looks at the market, what's going to happen on a one week, one month basis. I said, great. I should learn from him. So should you all. Because he taught me something that I already know. Swing trades are the ultimate way to make money. Day trading is great. I day trade with a bunch of my positions. If I'm up 10 points on Nike, I'm sorry, on, on, on Netflix, or seven points on Apple, and I have five calls, 10 calls, 15 calls, what am I going to do? Be stupid and say, no, I'm not going to take the profit? Of course I do. But the fact, the most difficult thing about trading is, ladies and gentlemen, is when to fold completely and when to leave a couple of chips on the table. Jason has been around for a while. Yeah, and I was I was just going to say Frank that tell me. maybe I maybe I'm embarrassed to say this but you know say the it. most money the most money that I make is typically when I walk away from uh, my computer for a little bit unfortunately. Hey, hallelujah. And Jason is not some schmuck from New York like I am. 
and not a, uh, a, 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 a gambler from Florida. He's sitting out there in Denver and he's speaking the truth. I sometimes want to walk away from the screen and say, no more trades. And I'm going to start doing that. Because the more we look at the gyrations, the more we get confused. I don't, but some of you do. And that's what I get the DM and the text messages. Hey, should I hold this? Should I hold that? Because not only is it the market, but individual stocks included, where we can make the most money when sometimes, like Jason said, and I agree with, we walk away from the screen. We focus on the technical swing trade. Now, that is only dependent if the S&P 500, which collapsed on Tuesday, Tuesday, and I was dead right when I said, my boy Donald from New York is going to flip, flop. He flipped and flopped. He flopped on the positive side. He said, maybe we should, what was this big drop about? Can somebody tell me? What was the big drop from uh, the beginning of December? What was the big drop on Monday and Tuesday? 860 what? points on the Dow Jones Industrial what? Average. What was it? Was that when he was saying that uh, that the, the trade deals may have to wait till after the election? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So Donald likes to talk out of both sides of the mouth. Okay. I love what he's doing for the U.S. economy. I hate when he puts, puts all these tweets out. And then, what did I say? Aside from the technical stuff, to tell you guys to buy the technical drops based on my charts, on the Fibonacci retracements, on the uh, stochastics getting bottomed and everything. I said he's going to flop or flip flop on the other side. And within 24 hours, and this little shaded part was, I said, what was this? What tactical pattern was this? It was a bull flag. It was a bull flag coming off the bottom. And that bull flag went like this, retested, see you later. And when I said he was going to flop because my quantitative trading model is not just based on technicals, it's based on understanding the political narrative coming out of the U.S. government, i.e. President Donald Trump, what's happening with the fundamental narrative that is the economic picture from the Federal Reserve and all that stuff, and a gut feeling of what I understand from all the years of trading. And I was dead right. So I know mo most of you are non-believers and everything, and I'm not Moses. Moses what, uh, try to convince uh, his tribe to walk through the desert and part the seas, no one believed him, and then the promised land came, right? So I'm not taking you to the promised land. I'm just telling you that's the crap that happens all the time. It doesn't matter what service you follow, through say trading, other this and that. Nobody's going to be as direct, as precise as I am. Why? Because I'm a nut. That's the reason I named my service Clueless A Trading. We are all clueless. You don't have to believe me 110%. Look at my track record on the most difficult times in the market. That's all. So we're going to show a path forward tonight. And you guys do what you need to do. Trade management is critical. Many of you have learned it through your own. Most of you cannot trade manage your trades whether it's stocks or the market. You can, because you're not capable of it. You're very successful in your careers, but you are not capable of it or doing it in the stock markets. That's a guarantee.
For that, I believe you need a lot of guidance, and that guidance comes in the form of the coaching that I do, the training, what we call the ACS, Advanced Coaching Sessions, reviewing all my videos on the new member introductory videos and all the sessions that I do, and understanding the messaging that's coming out of my charts. That's the only way you'll do with it. This market is not going to give you, like I posted two days ago at the bottom of the market, free money. You want free money, you have a Saudi king who's a nephew, your nephew of the Saudi king, and he's giving you, uh, what, half a million bucks a month? Yeah, but we're not Saudi king nephews. And what a terrible tragedy when that Saudi um, Naval Air Force training guy shot eight people, killed three or four in Pensacola, Florida. Terrible. Terrible. Breaks my heart. Unbelievable. And it's not about the culture. But my God, these Saudis need to be trained. I know Donald's friendly with the Saudi Arabian kings and everything like that, but every single 9-11 attacker came from, and which I almost died on, came from Saudi Arabia. There's a problem. It's a religion problem. It's a doctrine, dogmatic religious problem. Not the religion, but the actual dogmatic bullshit that goes on. And I hope they catch every one of those bastards. I'm sorry, I had to say that because it made me cry when I um, heard about the shooting. All right, guys, let's wake up. Okay, so that's it. So what's the big things that are happening this weekend, this week? So we're going to put, put up uh, our economic calendar. You guys better be intelligent, okay? It's not just about me giving you a couple of trades that go up like 100%, 200%. It's about you managing your trades. All right? So let's go to Econa Day. I'm pulling up on the other screen. Let's pull up view full calendar and let's bring it in. And please pray for the departed souls in Pensacola, Florida at the U.S. Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy who died for no reason and their families. Please do, as Americans, as human beings. And I hope that that guy was killed and his buddies were recording the shooting. Saudi Arabia better pay up for every single one of those families. <sighs> It hurts. Okay. Um, so where are we right now? We're coming into December 9th. And um, we got Monday. What's on Monday? Let me change the color. Nothing on Monday. Yeah, uh, a couple of uh, three bills, six month auctions and stuff. Nothing matters. Not that important. What happens on Tuesday? The Federal Open Market Federal Reserve meeting begins. Productivity and costs, very important. Inflation numbers. We don't want it to be hot, too hot, too high, because that means the economy is heating up too much. That means the Federal Reserve is not going to be open to cutting rates any further. Very simple. So we don't want that to be too hot. We want it to be in the middle. Red Book. Sales doesn't matter. Four week bill announcement doesn't matter. Eight week bill announcement doesn't matter. 10 year note auction, yes, does matter. Depends on the demand. What is the 10 year note auction mean? Does anyone know? That's a, that's a 10 year bond deal that I show a couple of times. What does that 10 year government bond auction mean? Doesn't that drive uh, mortgage rates? Yes, but in simple terms, does anyone else tell me, can, in, including you, Jason, you're on the right track. What does it mean? Why do we sell U.S. 10-year government bonds 
to do what? Raise money yes. for the government. Yes, for the economy, exactly. So if we are selling, because the US economy has a huge debt and deficit problem that none of us want to ever talk about. President Trump doesn't want to talk about. We have a God knows how many goddamn trillion dollar deficit. We are in debt. Now, debt is not bad. Just like you having a bunch of credit cards with $50,000 owed on it or $100,000, as long as you're making money to service that debt. Are you with me, all of you guys? With you. Yes. Okay. So if you're making 100,000, 200,000 bucks and you got a uh, $6,000 credit card bill every single month and you can service it, no big problem. So that's the thing, US economy is booming. Our GDP is running at two, two and a half percent, three percent a year. So we can service the debt. And here's a beauty of a thing. We are writing our own debt because our own bank, Federal Reserve Bank, is selling these bonds and absorbing a lot of the debt. That's the reason why Donald likes to scream, President Trump likes to scream at Federal Reserve Chairman Powell, which you know you guys have heard me many times, I think is the stupidest thing to do because he's doing the right things, i.e. Fed, uh, uh, Fed Chairman Powell. He's a patriot. He's an economic patriot. But Donald likes to scream at him and said, oh, bring the rates down, bring the rates down. Bring the rates down to what? Zero? Come on. What do we look like? A third world uh, bullshit country? So that's fine. You listen to my old videos. I rant about it a little while. So the point is the 10-year government auction is important because the demand is good. Then we're, they're going to pay, uh, they're going to stick to the rates that the government is asking for, which is, I don't remember what the 10 TNX is. I will tell you right now from my other screen. The TNX is at 1.842%. So there should be demand to buy government bonds, i.e. other people, including China, Japan, and all the other countries in the world who buy our debt, which many of you don't realize, China is actually our biggest creditor. Because they buy most of our debt. Because scream and shout, oh, the Chinese are bad people, blah, 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 blah. Well, Donald doesn't say Chinese are bad people. It's the Chinese government is screwing us in that. So how in the world do they hold our whole debt? The Japanese buy our debt. The Europeans buy our debt. The Saudis, the Abu Dhabi, and all the Middle East buys our debt. You don't see Russia buying our debt. Because Putin's a schmuck. He is. You don't see Russia buying our debt to support us. But it'll hack every one of our systems all the way through. And I have the best Russian friends in the world right here in New York, trust me. I go out with them every month, every two months, once or twice. Lots of great food, lots of dinner, and they'll laugh at us because we're so stupid. So any of you who are burying your heads in the sand, Russia is not a mortal enemy, but they are certainly not our friends. They don't buy a single one of our debt, our bonds. Why? Look it up. They love America so much. Why don't they buy, freaking buy a bunch of our 10 and 30 year government bonds when they have the auctions? China does. Japan does. The Arabs do. Think, think, think. This ain't betting on FanDuel and DraftKings. This is the real world, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to wake you guys up. So we are at 1.842%. So we want the, uh, uh, them to buy at this level because if the demand is low, 
can somebody, and this is simple math, this is like, you know, if the demand is low, what does the auctioneers, i.e. the government, have to do in order to attract buyers? This is not an SAT question. Can somebody pay a higher, pay a, pay a higher rate. Thank you. Jason Fox for president. Exactly. Love you, Jason. All right. Yes, you got to attract them by pay a higher rate. So the government has to say, okay, let me give you 1.9% so I can bring in $10 billion worth more of bids. Well, Jason understands bids. That's in the business he's in um, to, to attract the money. Exactly. So let's see what happens. So that's on, on Tuesday. Somewhat important. Thank you, Jason. Love brains, man. Make America smart again. That's my slogan. Make America great again means nothing. I could drink my ass out and just say, make America great again. Okay? And next morning, I'm like, make America stupid again because I'm coming over hangover. All right? Make America smart again. That's the way I look at it. That's what makes America great again. Brains. All right, let's move on. That's just my little two cents. The, what's great about, uh, what's, what's big about Wednesday, the FOMC meeting announcement. Fed Chairman Powell is going to reiterate the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be volatile. Look, the economy is strong. We had a great jobs number. We, the market went up 300 frigging points. I'm like beating my chest. I told you guys so. But okay, what's next? What if he, what in this Fed meeting announcement, of course, he's not going to cut rates. And I really hope Donald, who I love to death, doesn't pull up some stupid tweets and says, oh, he should cut rates. For what? The U.S. economy is going strong. Okay? So why are we going to cut rates? On the last tweet, President Trump said, we should go to negative rates. Give me the money. Okay, if I was sitting there getting drunk with some of you guys, you know, uh, drinking my non-carb, non-sugar, bourbon, and bubbly rose and all that stuff, yeah, we could talk about some stupid things. That's so stupid. Seriously. We are not Europe. We're not Japan. We're not disinflationary. We don't need to get cut rates to zero. For what? We go to negative rates, like President Trump said. I mean, I know he talks like, have the, you know, part of the time, like out of the other side of his mouth, which makes no sense. Okay? The U.S. economy is going to collapse. I'll tell you that right now. And I'm the ultimate patriot, all right? Never question my love for my country. So wake up, guys, okay? That's stupid political garbage. So I hope he doesn't put any stupid tweets out because press uh, 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 Chairman Powell might say that, hey, economy is doing great. We might be on hold on cutting rates. How much more can you cut rates? We're already at the bottom. Jesus. But he's going to be on keel, and the Wall Street's going to like it. The financial community is going to like it, in my opinion. Lots of volatility is going to happen, uh, but it's going to be good. And then he has the press conference. This is the part that I always worry about, because Powell is a complete nerd and an idiot when he talks. Seriously. Okay. It's not a bad guy, but sometimes he misspeaks. And the market takes it the wrong way. Because the markets are a bunch of vultures. Just the way us traders, we're a bunch of wolves. We try to make money of moves in the market. He's not looking at the stock market every tick by tick. All right? So he might. Bear with me. And this part is far more important than the technical charts, okay? So please, listen to it. 
So he might say, hey, we uh, might use some fancy lingo because he speaks proper English, unlike the rest of all of us, what we call Fed speak. And he talks straight. The problem with life is we don't like people who talk straight, right? You agree with me on that, guys? Yeah. Yeah. We don't like people who talk honest truth. No, because none of our politicians ever speak the honest truth, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. So Powell, the Fed chairman, just like Janet Yellen and Ben Bernanke, Ben Bernanke, who was criticized to death, they actually speak the truth. And the public doesn't want to hear it. We all want to hear nice, soft things that make us feel good. This is not a feel good stuff. So he might say some things which are really like direct, which the market might not like. And the public obviously has no frigging clue because half the NFL players and the celebrities, they ask, hey, what's the Fed? Federal Reserve, they said, oh, is that the FBI? You know, they did a survey a couple of years ago. That just shows how stupid we all are. Seriously. Ask your neighbor, hey, what's the Fed? Or the Federal Reserve? And they'll be like, mm, is that the FBI? And exactly. That's the problem with our country, if you ask me. Anyway, this is the most important day, Wednesday. Uh, comes Thursday, we flip over. So this is what I think is going to happen in the market. Markets are going to be a little bit up, then fall before the Fed. Then they're going to go a little volatile. They're going to be down like 100 points as we get into this. and Or maybe we're going to be up into Wednesday. Boom, we're going to fall. Relax. Relax. Okay? Then we're going to be like this, and we're going to end like this. Mark this frigging video. That's what's going to happen. So let's draw this out, okay? Markets are going to open a little bit down tomorrow. Tuesday is going to be a little bit up. Go up, fall. Ooh, little dip. Everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, it's all over. Bear market starting. All tactical charts are going to be on the Twitter feed. I'm not going to explain all that right now. I've done that for you guys, like right, left, and center, including last week, which was a microcosm of what happens to the market on a yearly basis. Big down Monday, Tuesday, and where did the market end up? So then it's going to be like this, a little bit like this, and then boom. That's the market for next week. Can you handle it? No, no, that's up to you. Keep position sizes small. Be selective. Come bunch of big earnings coming out. Big tech companies, Costco's, Oracle, and all those companies coming out. But this is, in my opinion, what's going to happen. So brace yourself or just don't trade. That's all. So uh, and then comes uh, uh, then comes Thursday. We have uh, PPI, producer price index, important inflationary numbers. All this stuff doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I mean, from a real uh, standpoint of the market, retail sales matters. Retail sales drop hard. We're gonna fall. Business inventories, yeah, kind of okay. I cross it out. It really doesn't have an effect on the market. This doesn't have an effect on the market. Jobless claims does have an effect on the market, but not that important. So what's important? The PPI, the CPI, Consumer Price Index, the basket of goods prices that we uh, 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 that we pay for. This Fed announcements, big time important. This is important. FOMC meeting uh, begins is not important because that's what they're serving the coffee and the donuts. This is not important. This is not important. This is important. Not important. Not important. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, just laid it out for you guys. Let's move on. Let's look at charts. Charts, charts, charts. Okay.
So what can happen this week? Can somebody walk me through? Because it, it's already there in front of you. So I'm gonna give the keyboard, whoever's a uh, share key, only two people on the keyboard, Mike Murphy and Seti. But from a technical standpoint, what can happen? Somebody speak up and tell me, because I wanna hear your feedback. Come on, it's right there in front of you. That's why I draw the charts. Knock, knock, knock. Is anyone home? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Frank. Yeah, so Looking tell at... me. So what can happen? Where, where is the, uh, uh, the retest level? Like, tell me, because I know you're looking at it just like everyone else. That's why I draw these charts. What's your first glance when you look at this chart, Jason? That it's probably going to stay above stay above the uh, thirty one thirty nine, and if it uh, if it drops below that, we're going to the thirty one twenty four level. Yes. So basically, what you are saying is we're going to stay within this channel, correct? Correct. That's my first thought, because none of us know exactly what's going to happen, but we are prepared for it. So, <clears throat> so right now, we are right here at the consolidation. This was a Fibonacci level, uh, this line, and 31.39. So we break that. So what's the next level that we come down to? We come down to the bottom end of this channel, which is around 31.30. Does that technically... You see, I want you guys to visualize what I see because I don't know exactly what's going to happen every five minutes. If I did, I'd be charging you guys $2,000 a month, if not $3,000, so you guys could make $10,000 a month on a small amount of money. But no, we're in the business of probability. So if I'm in the business of probability, I want you guys to see what I see. So this is your uptrending channel. Everyone see that? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So that should have been the answer. Everyone should have piped up and told me that. Exercise your brain, all of you. And I tell myself that all the time. Let's exercise our brain so we can be smarter. Make America smart again, okay? In, make, so, basically, so the, yeah, go ahead. The other thing that I'm looking at is that so we got the bad news on Tuesday and that, yeah. you know, that's that's like the bottom of that channel. So we're probably we're not going to we're not going to go below that channel unless we get some really bad news. OK, so the way I look at it, that a lot of the times you get intraday, intra volatility, manipulative moves by the machines. Correct, Jason? Correct. Yeah, that happens a lot. And that happened a lot. And we can see that clearly. That happened all the way along as we moved up. So my thing is, the way I look at it, I always look at extreme situations. This is the Fibonacci level where the bottom is around 3069 and the high is around uh, on the upper end of the channel, uh, which is where the markets were their highs on the uh, 2nd of December at uh, 3158. Everyone with me on that? Yes? Yes. Good. So I, I, I'm basically a visual trader. Let's say I knew nothing about the markets. Let's say I did never lived in New York and New Jersey. I didn't know anything about how Trump thinks. Like, you know, just I'm just following charts. So if that's the case, then a full pattern completion comes in at 3158, correct? So which is, correct. Which is roughly about from where we are right now on the E-minis, which is 3141. 3157 is roughly 16 points. So if you multiply 16 by 8 to convert it to Dow Jones points, we're talking about 128 Dow Jones points up here to hit back to the... And this is the short-term view we're looking at before we look at the long-term view. Then we're going to look at a few stocks. So 128 points on Dow Jones is actual average to reach the previous ATH or all-time highs, correct? Correct, yeah. Good, okay. Seti, are you with us? 
Seti, are you there? Seti is a real smart guy. He works for freaking Microsoft. Uh, Seti, are you there? Okay. Mike, can you hear us? Okay, Mike can hear us. I saw, I saw the uh, thing light up. All right, good. So the thing is, purely from a technical standpoint, I'm looking at a retest of the uptrend channel. A breakdown be beyond the uptrend channel brings me to this pattern symmetry. See that where it started? When did it start? It started at 8.30 in the morning on the 6th of December. What was the 6th of December? which was a Friday, Friday. Right, there. right there. So I, the way I look at it, and I look at things obviously in a very different way than most people, um, is this, it's a dome. So I could actually see the market going down there. And where I find to be strong support and a, and a level that I like the market to be defended or going bounce from is what? On the Fibonacci level. 31.13? Yes, which is what on the Fibonacci level? 50%? Yes. Shit, man. That's good. Exactly. So 50 fib. I talk about the fib 50. It's not like a line out of the deuce, one of my favorite shows on Netflix. Anyone seen the deuce? No? About New York? Never. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? It's all about New York from the 70s growing up. You got to watch it, you know. Uh, what's his name? DeFranco, the actor. It's the ultimate show, The Deuce. The Deuce, baby. You know, it's all about Times Square when it was, when it was uh, a complete, uh, you know, crap house back from the 70s and 80s. Um, you got to watch The Deuce, man. Seriously. Uh, so, okay, 50, 50 fib. 50 fib. That's the big dotted blue line. Remember, every line matters. So the 50 fib has to be very important. Now there's also a big downtrend line from the uh, from the beginning of December. So that downtrend downtrend line has to be defended, which is right here. Look, when the markets open down big, the first thing I do, well, I always look at my charts, but the first thing I do is look at my charts, look at the internals, which I'm not showing right here, and I say, okay. Am I going to survive today? And then I see everything oversold and it's touching all these levels. I say, yes, I will have a chance to buy and make some crap load of money over the next 24 to 48 hours. That is exactly how I thought here where I was wrong. I'm sorry, uh, here where I was wrong and here where I was very right. So I might be a day off, but I always say 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Seti, can you hear us? Mike? Okay. I tried. So bottom line is that the 50 fib is very, very important. Let's move on from the short-term charts. We already have a handle on that. We see the uptrend channels. It's never the charts. It's how you structure it. Jason knows it. He's a structural engineer. You understand all that crap, Jason, right? I would hope so. I know so, okay? <laughs> so that's how you understand. Hopefully you understand. The market is a lot more emotional uh, than engineering, but uh, I know what I'm talking about makes sense to you because you see how everything is so precise. It's nothing to do with me. It's because the machines are so mathematically precise that I can join lines where I can, after I draw my charts, I can say, yes, I'm satisfied with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the way it is. So we got up there, we pulled back, nothing wrong with that, and everything is okay for now, till unless we go nuts on this side. So we're good with that? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. Makes sense. Okay, so let's, uh, so let's take a look at the, one hour chart which is basically the longer term picture so the one hour chart looks like this 
the upper end of the chart is extremely bullish. Could be by the end of the year, 3,200, 3,220, and on an extreme level, 3,240, which is this green line. Forget all that stuff. Let's talk about what's happening right now. So here we have a little hook, and that hook basically has to hold around 3,136 has to hold the previous breakout. What is this line? I should make this bigger. I just want people to understand my chart so that they can do better. That's all. That's the only reason I survive and I survive better. Remember, when you're a caveman and the mammoths are coming after you, you don't shoot them through the head, they're gonna trample over you. You're done. So the mammoths and all the wild beasts out in the whatever they were back in the, in the caveman days, right? Neanderthal days. You got to kill them first before they kill you. You got to kill the algos first before they kill you. So think about it like that. I'm just talking straight tonight, all right? So my point is, let's try to figure out where they're going to, where they come to attack us. So at this point, um, we have a uptrend line here till 3137. We have this. Whichever the case, the structure looks still pretty good. What we do not want is something like this, which happened back at the first part of December, right? Which was those two days where the market fell 876 points. Now, the market has gone up 800 points so far, just so you know, while you guys were all sleeping. Well, some of you were sleeping. So obviously, it's going to rest a bit. So I believe the market still has a little bit of room to pull back about 100, 200 points before it tries to make an attempt higher. If you notice how those idiotic analysts who are so bearish on the market all of a sudden are turning bullish, I don't particularly like that because they are the contrarian indicators. But at the same time, read some of the articles that Dominic has and DM me about that I put out there about not what Citigroup is saying, but what the Wall Street Journal said about how much money the individual investor and funds are taking out of the market while the market's making new highs. What does that tell you? Bunch of idiotic dumb money. Dumb money always takes money out when the markets are going higher. They always put money in while before the market peaks. It's just the way it works. So this is fine. This is still a bull flag on the longer term chart. This was your previous high that we broke. You can see that right there. So we need to hold this level. Let's stick to that. Next one is the 15 minute. Well, I showed you that before. We're good. Stochastics are oversold. We're, we're fine. This is the level that we're watching for. Let's take a look at the daily. This is your daily chart. <clears throat> Everyone understand this chart because I want people to understand a little bit. What happened here when I told you guys two couple of days ago, actually back on the third, what day was the third? The third was when the market basically cranked lower and hit <clears throat> rock bottom. We were down 876 points, okay? And I told you guys, which all of you should remember, because if you did remember, you made a lot of money. And if you didn't, you didn't make money. And this happens every single time. What happens every single time? Somebody fill in the blanks. This happens. What is this indica ex internal indicator? I even took the time to put external, internal. Anyone remember that chart I put out there? I do. Anyone else remember? I even wrote it down in simple English. External, internal. Focus on the externals and look at the internals. I can't get any, I mean, come on, you know. I refuse to change your diapers with my bare hands. I'll only do that for my doggies. I'll clean their poop. I'll clean their butts. I am not going to do that for my traders. I want my traders to be grown adults. When I put down external internals and I show people 
and it's on my Twitter feed. I'll look at show you to you guys in a second. That when we are this bottom, that you have to buy. There will be a reflex rally within 24 to 48 hours. I showed the McClellan oscillator. I showed a whole bunch of stuff on my last thing. And if you guys still didn't do it, well, God help you. Okay. Maybe get a non-documented illegal alien to change your diapers because I ain't going to do it. Seriously. All right? And they'd be happy to do it because you're going to pay them big money to do it because they're hard workers, unlike us. When you get stochastics this low and it's crossing over and the markets are starting to hit these important rising 34 50 day moving average well in this case 34 day moving average you better buy otherwise lie down get a nurse to change your diapers while you lose money really it makes me sick and tired that i have to do so much work and few people listen to it really it does it's so sad Make America dumb again. Is that our slogan? Stochastics get like this. You buy the frigging crap out of the market. Stochastics are moving higher while the market is kind of vacillating. Buy, buy, buy. Stochastics are still up higher, buckling a little bit. Okay? Still not overbought. What do you do? Panic again? No, you buy. This is what? What pattern is this of this large bullish green candle? Somebody step up and answer me. Engulfing. It's a bullish engulfing candle, that's for sure. Why is it engulfing, Dominic? Why is it engulfing? Yeah, why is it engulfing? Why is this candle engulfing? It's engulfing what? What is it surpassing? The very simple. It's the past it's the previous candle. See that? So it's going over. That's why it's going to have the engulfing candle is you have the previous candle and it's basically going over that. So it is chewing up the previous red candle and creating a large green candle. That's called the engulfing candle. It's like a shark engulfs and eats you up when you're swimming in the wrong direction. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. That's why it's called the engulfing candle. So it's engulfed the previous losses. Now, this is not just engulfing candle. It's a bull flag, which you know very well. It's still a bull flag. So that means the markets are going higher. Got it? So work out how much can the markets go higher? We can look at the upper end of the channel and we can see exactly where the markets are going higher because I've been dead right on that almost 90% of the time. Where are the markets going higher? The upper end of the market is 3180. That's all. Once it hits this upper end of this broad channel that started all the way in August of 2019, which was many, many months ago, then we should be fully overbought. That's why I have an arrow here. That's enough of the long-term picture, but thank you for that answer. It is a bullish engulfing candle, but this structure is a bull flag. Does that look like a bull flag to you? Yeah, it does. Okay. Question is, one has to believe in it and stick with it. So let's move on. Uh, stock, 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 stocks. Uh, let me bring in the charts. Let's look at think or swim here for a minute. Charts. So I like McDonald's. It's a new position. We just put it out there. They have the new chicken burger coming out. I'll try it. Why do I like McDonald's? How many times have I showed charts like this on many, many stocks, which have been monster winners? I love stocks like this because they're still cheap. And cheap means you're buying low. And you're going to sell high. Does McDonald's chart looks like it's really stretched out to the upside? Anybody? SETI, Mike Murphy, if... Dominic? Not at all. Right. 
So where do you think from a tactical standpoint on a, let's say, week two week basis, where the stock can go to? Easy, easy, easy 198, but then 206. Okay, so I'll take your word for it. 198 or at least 199.57, which is the sloping down 50-day moving average, right? So 198, I don't say easy, easy, but I'll take your word for it. Yes. Now, the other reason I like it from it, options logistics is because the calls are so freaking cheap. They're a dollar and change, right? So you can yeah, buy I two, think they were. you can buy three, you can buy four, you can buy 10. And if it pulls back to 60 cents, you could buy a little bit more. It doesn't break the bank from an option trader standpoint. And as it moves towards 198, those are going to be two or three dollars. And as it moves towards kissing the back end of the 50 day moving average, it's going to be 199.57, correct? Yeah. And you're going to be jumping with joy on a slow moving but a big money making stock. And this is McDonald's. It has nothing to do with China. It has nothing to do with interest rates. It's McDonald's. I like McDonald's. Now, this is the big picture. This is a large megaphone on the daily. McDonald's doesn't look like it's going to go 175. The new, new chicken sandwich that's coming out is being talked about big time. It's going to compete with Popeyes. It's going to be huge. I think it's going to be great. They're uh, uh, working with Impossible uh, Meat, Impossible Burger, whatever. Sales are going well. So, using your own words, let's say easy peasy, it goes to 198. Good. You make yourself double your money. If it does go to the gap fill, which is 206, and remember, McDonald's can be up on a day the markets are down 200. Remember that. Then you have made six times your money. Do you want to do that? Buy Mickey D's. I like this chart a lot. Okay? There's nothing wrong with this chart. I know what my downside is. My downside is 191. And I don't think it's going to go to 187. So I would draw a line like this to show you that it's going back to kissing. Big. Dow Jones Industrial Average stocks, big S&P 500 stocks, always, 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 within a certain period of time, like to retest the 50-day moving average. That's 199.57. Just remember that. Now, if it fails there, it's going to fall from there. Fine. But in the meantime, make money as it's coming back to retest the 50-day moving average. Am I loud and clear? Absolutely. It's the simplest way of trading. You don't have to think about all the wild, crazy stocks that we trade. These are the stocks that you want to focus on. Let's take a look at Boeing. I told you guys to buy Boeing right here the other day. Boeing was up. How many? Look at this candle. Does, what is that candle, Dominic? In your eyes? Bullish engulfing. It is. Why is it bullish engulfing? Because it engulfed the last candle, the red one. Thank you. Real simple. And if it engulfs the previous, uh, the one above that, which is over 355, you got these levels for it to conquer. 365. What calls did we buy? 360 and 375. Why did I say 375? Because they're goddamn cheap and Boeing is going to get recertified. I told people to buy Boeing not here. I told people to buy Boeing here. The stock went berserk. Yes, ups and downs, ups and downs took a couple of days. My opinion, the stock is going back to 375, but on the short-term basis, based on the bullish engulfing candle, again, a retest of the back end of the sideways moving. I called it a sideways moving red line. 50-day uh, moving average is 361. Cannot people, people don't like making 80, 120% on their options? What's happening with the internals? Forget the news out there. The news is all goddamn noise. And plus, I love Boeing. 
So I'm kind of biased towards it. Buy America. You know, people buy Samsung phones for what? When they can buy iPhones. Why don't you buy Boeing instead of Airbus? Airbus is a European subsidized behemoth. Boeing are far better planes. Not that you and me are going out and buying a Boeing airplane, but seriously, think about it. In this case, buy complete American. Buy iPhones, dump your Samsungs, buy Boeing, and stop supporting the bloated European subsidies on Airbus. Nobody else makes great planes. What else is happening with Boeing on the daily? This is happening. What happened last time this happened? What happened last time this happened when the stochastics bottom? Gotta think. These are the slow moving big time money makers. And you gotta have some faith in these companies. Their managements are great. They're not freaking crooks like the rest of the world. Most corporations are. Our corporations, a lot of them are crooks too, but much less than the other foreign corporations. I don't trust any Chinese corporation out there. They're all making up their numbers. I don't trust most of the European corporations out there. They're all making up their numbers. Our corporations cannot make up their numbers because the SEC is over there. They're lying in bed with them every night. So what's the big deal with this? What's happening here? Why aren't you buying Boeing? Yes, it's going to vacillate a little bit, a couple of bucks here and there. Aside from another couple of Boeing airplanes crashing, which I really, you know, terrible thing to say, because people die when planes crash, stock is fine. And this is just a simple chart. The, com the more complex charts I've shown. This is your triangle. This is your consolidation. It's still a frigging bull flag as long as it holds 340, uh, 345 or 340. That's all. And all this is for yours to have. Apple told you guys to buy it. Still telling you guys to buy it. What the hell's happening with Apple? Oh my God, nobody's buying Apple. Everyone's buying Samsung. Every one of you has a Samsung phone. I swear to God, just take it, burn it, or take it to the Apple store and say, listen, I want to buy Apple. I want to give you my Samsung. They're going to give you double your money, all right? Just friggin' do it. What's Samsung so great about? Okay, it's a great phone. It's got a great screen. Does it have any apps? It runs on freaking Android. What the hell's going on, guys? Seriously, you think I'm joking? Dump your Samsungs right now. What do you want me to give you? 10 bucks for you to dump your Samsungs? I know I'm a funny guy, but seriously, I'm sick and tired of people using Samsungs. Why? You know what the Samsung family is? Go read up on it at Google. They're a bunch of frigging like nuts. Is Tim Cook a nut? No. Was Stephen Chief Jobs a nut? Yeah, he was a nut. He was a good nut. Have you read about the Samsung family? What they what they've done in South Korea? None of you guys know anything about it. Why don't you go read it? And you go buy Samsung phones? Seriously, man. Shame on you. Really, shame on you. So what's happening with Apple here? What is this? What's going on here? I want you guys to speak instead of me looking at the same things. What's going on here? What happened here? What is this? Come on, guys. Somebody pipe up because I don't have all night. I don't know what it is. What the, what, is, what the hell do you know? You don't believe? You're not looking at it. It's a complete breakout. You don't know what's going on. You use a Samsung phone? No. Okay, thank God, because I'd fuck, like murder you. I mean, just kidding. I wouldn't murder you. Seriously. So what do you mean you don't know what's going on? No, oh, now I see it. It, it definitely yeah, broke I mean, about. Listen, I'm wearing my computer glasses, my reading glasses, like 2.5, like power, whatever is that. I can see what's happening. So let me just show you what's happening. Now that you guys are so clueless, you don't see what's happening. Come on. This is a massive breakout. 
Look at that. This is the world's largest company breaking out. I'm serious. Dude. It's the world's largest, one of the world's largest companies breaking out. Despite all the garbage from every single analyst that Apple can do anything. This is a monster breakout. What's this level here? Can somebody tell me? Read the numbers for me. What is this number? 260.40. Just call it 260. What's this number? The previous high that we broke out of. What's this number? 269. No, it's 268. Okay. 268.55. So what's, what's the difference between 260 and 268? Eight points. Right. So you add eight points to this box. This is your trade, the last trading level since uh, November. So now that we're broken out above it, add eight to 268. What does that come to? 270. 271. 276. Yeah. To 276. Apple's going to 276, which means Apple's going to 280. When? December, Apple's going to go to 276 in December. I told you guys Apple was going to 270. You guys yawned and uh, some of you bought, some of you didn't. Who the heck cares? I told you guys to buy Apple right here at 257. I told you guys to buy Apple at 240. Well, that was a little while ago, but in October. But right here, I told you guys buy the Apple at 260. It's going to go to 270. It hit 270. Apple's going to go to 276. You don't need to overthink the market. Freaking tra track, uh, 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 trade Apple, trade Spy, IWM, which we will look next, and QQQ. That's it. Don't overthink. The world's largest, one of the world's largest company is breaking out. And we're sitting here twiddling our heads, all of us included, because we're all goddamn idiots saying, hmm. Can we make money in this market? And most other idiots are not making money and taking money out of the stock market. And they all are waving little flags, like I say. Oh, we love America. Make America great. Yeah, in the meantime, they're all sucking money. And they're all taking their money out of the stock market and going into, into uh, money market funds. Oh, yeah, you really love America. That's great. Mm, real smart. Seriously. It's like, makes me like, just makes me realize how stupid most people are. Seriously, they are. And I'm not the 1%, okay? So let's take a look at IWM, which we've been making a ton of money on. IWM has a lot more room to go. We got to look at the weekly. Look at the weekly. You could actually just trade the IWM. Didn't I talk about the last webinar that this was the one you got to focus on and it went up a gazillion percent right after that? Yes or no? You sure did. I sure did. I sure did. So I'm telling you right now, IWM is one of the only indices, and this is made in America, like U.S. small caps. 80% of the earnings come from American uh, uh, um, domestic demand. So jobless uh, uh, numbers are that great. U.S. economy is humming along. Why shouldn't IWM catch up? The problem is a lot of them are regional banks, a lot of them are biotech, so they kind of like, you no, know, move around. But this chart, I love. We broke out of this pattern. What is this pattern, Jason? Mr. J. Fox, Hollywood name. What is this yeah. pattern that we broke out of on the on the IWM? Uh, there's some consolidation there. Bullshit. It's an ascending triangle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you're right. It's a consolidation. You're right. The consolidation was within this uh, uh, trading band. So you're right on that part. This was the consolidation. And we broke out of it. That's that's what, what you were looking at, I assume, right? So Yeah, I'm on my iPhone. Not not making an excuse, but I, I didn't see the, uh, the, the back half of that uh, triangle oh, okay. there. No problem. So. But you but you are right in this respect. So you got 50% right that you were looking at this consolidation and we broke out of that band. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not rocket science. Um, 
and I'm saying this right now, okay? The IWM is going to go to 170. One way or the other, manage your trades and get there. Just get there. Just get there. We have a reversal hammer. We have a massive breakout over this thing. We have all the talking heads now finally waking up to the IWM or the RUT, which is the Russell 2000, which is buy iPhone, dump your Samsung deal. Okay, buy American. And I'm a person of promoting global trade and all kinds of stuff as long as it makes our companies money. I'm not in the business of telling our companies what to do or not, but I am in the business because I have a right to do so in a half kidding way to tell my members, dump your Samsungs and buy iPhones. People are like, Frank is nuts, man. He goes on and on about it, but I mean it. Seriously, support your own companies iPhone's coming up with a 6.7 inch screen, which I've been screaming about forever. I want a bigger frigging iPhone. I have the XX Max, which is the largest screen iPhone. And I want the big iPhone so I can hear Jason texting me saying, planning on joining you tonight. <laughs> That's serious. Or looking at my charts and looking at my doggy pictures or looking at all kinds of good stuff that I look at, all the news and stuff that I'm looking at trading off my iPhone when I'm not at my trading desk. I want a large screen iPhone. It's coming next year, 5G. So burn your Sam Dunks, all right? Ascending triangle breakout, 170. It's coming. Now, when is it coming? Oh, tomorrow, Frank? No. Probably by the, I'm thinking, end, and maybe end of December. Well, that's going to be a lot, but even if we go to 165, you're still going to get 70 to 90 to 110 percent on your money. So this is a serious chart. It's a major breakout. It's a major breakout. Let's not futz around and say, mm, maybe not, maybe not. This is serious. Okay. That's so what I'm looking, I'm looking at. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this on investing.com just because. Sure, sure. I go ahead. Uh, I can't pull up yours. So I, I'm looking at there's like a two dollar uh, gap from. Uh, from Friday, do you uh, think yes. that that'll you think that that'll get filled before? It's not a two dollar gap from Friday. In fact, on fr uh, on Friday alone, it uh, reversed from one fifty eight to one sixty. I'm mean, sorry, on Friday alone, I told you guys to buy it. This is what happened. Um, I told you guys to buy it at this gap fill. This is this is my point, and Dominic knows that because last time I told people to buy it at one fifty nine. It went to 161. I did not expect it to go to 163. It is on the upper end of the range right now. There might be a little back and fill on the daily, but everything underneath the surface, the internals are telling us we're going higher. Everything. Okay. Gotcha. Now, what I'm looking at you know, on a swing perspective, where, like you said, sometimes when you walk away from the screen, it's the best uh, uh, theory, which I completely agree with, um, is this picture which is the weekly picture u.s economy is very strong there are more stronger and stronger numbers coming out the jobs report validated that point so i'm looking at it from a standpoint that from from a catch-up to the other indices from here to the end of the year we are looking at uh this this level to fill that's what i'm focusing on see this there now that's a big level because seven points or six points, let's say, from 163, I'm saying from 163 is three points, uh, four, that's almost a 3.6% or 4% move. Can it happen? Yes, I think it can happen. I think this is the level that, that it stalls. The highest on the IWM was 175. I'm not even looking at that. I'm simply looking at this and my charts based on the lines that I've drawn is all pointing towards 170. I think it's something that can, in my opinion, if you manage your trades right in between the little vacillations that happen, volatility that happens intraday, can actually move your account up almost 60 to 80 to 100% between now and December. I think I, I, I'll be fair enough to say that. Don't have to even look at the rest of the market. Now, unless we break below this, 
and this turns this way and breaks below the 160 level again 166.16 uh, in that case obviously uh, my theory is debunked but otherwise I think it's heading this way am I clear on that yeah that's all that's all we got a whole bunch of earnings coming I'll put them out tomorrow um, one of them um, there's Adobe, there's Broadcom, which is Avago. Haven't traded that in a bit. Still looks pretty damn good. Look at the weekly chart on Avago. Uh, what's the daily chart? Um, Avago is a big uh, Apple suppliers, a good, bar a serious barometer for all kinds of semiconductors in the global arena. I'm looking at uh, around 325 as the top. Where did the stock close at 315? I'm looking for a 10 point move. On this, everything else looks great. Look at that. Um, There's a whole bunch of earnings, but we have a volatile week coming up. We have Brexit, um, elections on the 13th. Um, we have the Fed meetings that I talked about. Um, we have the China-US trade deal, all kinds of news going back and forth. So we have to be careful, but I do believe the bias is still upside. And from what I can see about the markets, looking at the spies, looking at everything else I've explained, um, the bias is on the upside. But we have to be careful. Uh, we have to be quick in taking profits because things are gonna move, gonna move uh, very fast. Uh, where is the, things are gonna move very fast, uh, but at the same time on the swing trade, um, I'm looking at the Boeings, I'm looking at the McDonald's, I'm looking at things like that. I'm looking at Nike that I told you guys to buy. Uh, let me show you a picture of Nike. I'm talking about the bunch of biotechs that I talk about that I'm pretty excited about. Look at Nike on the weekly, I'm looking at Nike at 102. Everything is going in that direction. You don't have to overthink these trades. You gotta buy some, buy time, a month out, and leave them alone. And using Jason's own words, walk away from the screen. As long as this type of directional bias is intact. Nike is good for 102. It's closed at 97, it goes to 102. You have more than doubled your money. Almost tripled your money. What more could, could I offer you? This is on Nike, for God's sakes. Things that are in your closet, on your shoe rack. Okay, beautiful chart. Beautiful chart. Chipotle is another one I told you guys. This is a monster. I wish I'd put all my money in Chipotle and just never traded. I mean, seriously, because I told people to buy Chipotle at 250, 260. People remember that. Jason remembers that. Remember one of the videos I talked about Chipotle being the ultimate long term trade? Absolutely, there was some big money in in uh, in those for a while. You know, big money, and I'm the oh, goddamn idiot for trading it halfway up and down and not keeping big money in there. In which case, I would have said, you know, guys, see you later. I'm just going to pick and choose who I want to be included as a trading, and I'm shutting down my service. At one point, I'll do that. Okay, I'll pick and choose and say, guys, this is how much you pay to be in the service, and I'm just going to keep on giving you awesome stuff, and the rest of you. See you later, sayonara. I ain't babysitting, because I babysit too many people, all right? Seriously, I'm gonna do that at some point soon. But yes, so Chipotle, I actually told people to buy, not exactly at 250, but all around here. And look where the frigging stock is, at 900 almost. Chipotle is going to $950, okay? So buy some long data calls on your own at 950, going into next spring, whatever. They have nothing to do with China. They have great stuff. I go to Chipotle. I mean, I don't go to Chipotle. I mean, I do like Chipotle, but I like Cadoba a lot too. You know, impossible meat. I eat healthy. You know, I you know, don't eat junk food. And uh, you know what? All great stuff. And what is this chart? Does this need a rocket scientist to figure it out? It's going to 950. That's all I got to say. Go some buy, buy some 950 calls going out to next March. And I w I'm the first idiot who actually recommended people out here and I should have just bought calls out a year out. And I did tell people to do that actually. 
And yes, I made some really decent money on the way up. But like I tell you, nobody's perfect, all right? I'm going to, you know, I have 900 calls out there that I just like left there. I don't even look at it. They keep on sliding up every week. What's going to happen? Some roach is going to drop. Another rat's going to be in the food. Uh, the Chinese are going to, uh, the Russians or the Chinese are going to hack Chipotle. Uh, uh, um, what do you call their uh, uh, what do you call uh, what do you call their uh, the one that I like a lot? Their briskets and everything, and poison them. Eh, who knows? You know, they're all after doing that. But uh, no. Besides from all that stuff, the stock's going to nine hundred. It's going to eight sixty three. I told people to buy the eight sixty calls at three bucks. Do what you need to do. Have a great evening. God bless you all. We'll see you guys yeah. tomorrow. It's going to be it's going to be a very busy week. Very busy, get cash to the charge. Don't go nuts. Nothing's going wrong. We're still going to go higher and stay focused. Hey, thank